So we have, uh, as you guys know, um, a celebration tomorrow yes. for NATO's 75th anniversary. Um, and ahead of this, Politico has run a series of articles, um, I believe four, um, about NATO's plan to Trump proof itself. So we have four articles from Politico and these include, uh, let me just find it really quick. Is it 32? Well, they've interviewed a huge number of diplomats, Trump orbit people. Um, and these articles paint a picture where it, is pretty clearly considered a foregone conclusion that NATO believes that Trump will be the next oh, yeah. president of the United he's States. Well, he's short of assassination, he will. Yeah. Um, just remember that the, one of us has to be muted at a time. Um, so more than six months before the next American president takes office, uh, there's already an extraordinarily advanced effort across the NATO alliance and far beyond to manage a potential transfer of power in America. With President Joe Biden listing badly in his bid for re-election, many allies anticipate that at this time next year, they will be dealing with a new Trump administration, one defined by skepticism towards Europe, a strident strain of right-wing isolationism, and a hard resolve to put confronting China over other global priorities. More Politico, uh, Politico and the German newspaper Welt embarked together on a reporting project to assess how the world is preparing for Trump's return to the White House, possible return. Uh, reporters for both publications interviewed more than 50 diplomats, lawmakers, experts, and political strategists in NATO nations and elsewhere six months before the next American president takes office. I, I have that twice. I apologize. Um, first, there's extensive extensive personal, uh, and this, this is talking about NATO's like NATO countries. And what the articles show is that they're reaching out to all of Trump's people, all of the people suspected to be in Trump's next administration and trying to, you know, get feelers on his plans. So uh, this includes by them extensive personal outreach to Trump and advisors, uh, policy shifts aimed at pleasing Trump and his political coalition, chiefly by soothing Trump's complaints about inadequate European defense spending and creative diplomatic and legal me measures in the works to armor NATO priorities against tampering by a Trump administration. So what they're trying to do here, and this is illuminated over the course of four articles by them, is transfer all of America's responsibilities in terms of arming, equipping, training, etc., into actual NATO's purview, which in my view, would make NATO an active participant in the war, although they've long been that. Um, and you have, I mean, people going to Mar-a-Lago, who is your new Secretary of State in the UK? Lammy. Yeah, yeah. lammy has been going to Mar-a-Lago, um, upsetting the Biden administration. Uh, this is after Lammy called Trump a Nazi sympathizer. Yeah, I mean, when the... Um, when, uh, Trump basically, I think it was in 2019. Trump had an official. Am I unmuted? Yeah, the Trump had an official meeting. Um, he had an official state visit to the U.S. and I think it was like the, it was it was a very rare thing for a U.S. president to get this kind of treatment. And like the Labour Party were like all in on on condemning it and how awful it was that the Conservatives were meeting with them. And there were these huge protests which they they were were supportive of. And then now many of the same officials are um, bending the knee to yeah. be polite. <clears throat> yeah. yeah, so uh, after at a mid-June meeting of NATO defense ministers in Brussels, members of the alliance agreed in principle on a plan to shift control of NATO support for Ukraine. Up to this point, the United States has taken the lead in organizing military aid through a 300-person unit known as the Security Assistance Group Ukraine, housed at an American military office in Germany. Uh, so this, I mean, they're they're trying to redirect all of this stuff under NATO control uh, to quote unquote Trump proof uh, the organization. Um, 
Stoltenberg has also proposed an alternative configuration, transferring responsibility for aid management to NATO itself and especially to European partner states. In theory, this would make uh, this would make the administration of aid, quote, Trump proof, as some diplomats say. The final decision is expected at the NATO summit in Washington again tomorrow. Um, if implemented, this plan would gradually uh, uh, gradually shift control of aid to a group of 200 NATO soldiers in the Belgian city of Mons, a group that would continue working with the United States, but under the NATO flag. Um, so at the same time that NATO is trying to basically handcuff a Trump administration, uh, you have the Biden administration where in, in South Korea working to... Uh, basically do the same with uh, American military uh, drills there. So this is a, a key paragraph here. The State Department recently, recently acknowledged that another American ally, South Korea, was pressing for an early renewal of a deal that helps pay for the 28,000 U.S. troops stationed in the country. The current deal does not expire until 2025, but renegotiating it with Trump could be much more difficult, given his frequent complaints about the cost of American support for South Korea. So, I, I mean, this, this we have kind of a double-edged sword here because on one hand, we're inclined to say, well, Trump is a little bit more um, hands-on with NATO, a little bit more bossy, um, basically wants to run it right like a pr protection racket. Um, so does a Trump presidency weaken or strengthen NATO? Well, I think it could strengthen it because – the thing is, is Trump's primary concern is getting NATO states to spend more money on defense. So if they start spending more money on defense to please the big man, uh, well, I think we have a stronger NATO. So, I mean, that's a very real possibility. Let's not forget the fact that uh, under Trump um, was the first administration of lethal aid to Ukraine. Yeah. Uh, under Trump, there were more military drills in Eastern Europe than uh, any other president. So, I mean... Uh, under pressure, tore, Trump also under pressure tore up a large number of Cold War era arms control yeah, treaties. Yeah. yeah, which the Russians were not very happy about. Um, they, they're rather fond of um, uh, diplomatic agreements like that, um, and they were. And these, a lot of these, the, the, I mean, they, 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 they were forgotten by that point. But a lot of them were like, kind of regarded as major wins for international diplomacy during the Cold War. Yeah, you know. Um, so, yeah, it, it's, <clears throat> I think, <clears throat> as well, that, like, the, tr what, I mean, what Trump was saying about NATO was very far removed from um, uh, what, how this was presented. So what he was saying, whether you agree with this position or not, um, is entirely a matter for you, uh, was saying that, well, look, it's a, it is a quote-unquote military alliance. So it is completely insane that the U.S. provides something like eighty percent of its funding, yeah. right? So I mean, it was a way of, of getting Europeans to pay the way, but but also benefiting American defense contractors because you know you have to get shiny NATO kit, uh, military equipment, which is often rubbish. Uh, but like, it's like, yeah, the, 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 this was framed as, oh, he's going to leave NATO, he's going to break up NATO. And it's like, it's, he's said very, very clearly, like this time round, um, no, this is just about ensuring that European countries are paying their way. Um, so, of course, European countries, which have for a very long time, not spent anything on defense and just relied on having US military bases on their soil, are unhappy about it. Uh, shock horror. Um, well, and if you look at the debate, uh, you know, Biden thought he had a real gotcha when he said to Trump, hey, are you going to leave NATO? You know, and yeah. Trump was kind of like, but like what that does, that's very, that's very in line with Trump's style where he expresses a, a strategic ambivalence and him shrugging like that is a cue to people in Brussels to be like, all right, we got to, we got to spend more yeah. so that he doesn't leave because we yeah. need to please him. Otherwise, you know, yeah. um, the deal. Yeah, the art, the art of the deal. Exactly, exactly. Hey, everyone. Um, if you enjoyed this video or, or any of our other content, uh, please give us a follow on Twitter or subscribe to us on YouTube. It will help us beat the algorithm oligarchs. Thank you.